In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to use one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications, and we're gonna show you how to use a spiral layout gadget to automatically create the vectors that will then be used to produce a spiral column that you can see on screen. So this represents where we're heading, but let's have a look at how to actually create our own file. So first, gonna to come to File and Close, and then we're gonna click on Create a New File. Now, in our Job Step screen, we're gonna have a rotary job, because this is a wrapped rotary job. Uh, our length is 12 inches, our diameter is 3 inches, units are inches. My Z0 position is from the cylinder axis because I need the accuracy as I'm not sure my uh, current piece of material is even all the way around. My XY dating position is bottom left. And my orientation for my wrapped rotary job will be along the x-axis because that is how my machine is set up. So if your machine is set up in a different orientation, do check this. But mine's along x, which means we will wrap the y-axis. And while well, I don't have a model, in this case, I am going to use a very high resolution and my material settings will be set to Canadian Maple. So let's click OK and have a look at how we set up that spiral. OK, so now we have a worksheet ready to go. You can notice that we don't have any vectors ready, so we need to find a way to actually create them. Now, you could actually create the vectors needed for this guide manually, but there's actually a very cool gadget available in VCAF Pro and Aspire that allows us to create the vectors automatically without some of the mathematical calculations and some of the complexity that comes with manual design. So let's have a look at opening up this gadget. So come to the top here and we click on Gadgets, go to Wrapping and we go to Spiral Layout. So you notice it opens up the form and it has a description of the Spiral Layout gadget at the top here and various settings that we can change. Now, in this scenario, I actually want to use four strands to go around the circumference of my piece. I then want to look at the options for using spiral pitch or spacing, and in this case, I want to use spacing between the strands because I want an even spacing between each of them. So I set that to one inch by checking the option here and specifying why I want the inches to be in this section over here. And then I do want an offset from the start and end of my worksheet. So I want the spiral to start from one inch from the end and the start will end one inch from the end and start from one inch from the start. So I've got one and one in these fields here. And in this case, I'm creating a left hand twist. And we also have the option to create coves. Now, if you've seen the video on uh, creating a fluted column, we cover how to create coves in that video. So you can always check that out. But essentially what this would do is create a vector line from top to bottom uh, from the an inch from the start because we've got an inch set here and here uh, that will create a vector at the start of the job and the end of the job that would create a cove that would wrap all the way around your job but in this case I don't I don't want to use one and you can see at the bottom here I've got a graphic to represent my length and di uh, diameter for my cylinder so the length is 12 inches as you set up in the job setup sheet and the diameter is 3 inches but I'm happy with those settings so let's have a look at what the vectors look like and here you can see it tells you the total number of revolutions for this spiral. So that's just for your information. We can hit OK, and now you'll see we have a series of vectors that we can now use for our spiral column. So let's hop over to the 3D view, and you can see the vectors in full view here going off of the worksheet. Now, the reason they're going off of the worksheet is because the software is actually taking into account that this is going to be a wrapped job. So if you imagine uh, this worksheet here is going to be wrapped in the y-axis. If you recall earlier, we set our job to be along the x-axis, so the y-axis will be wrapped around. So what's going to happen with the vectors is that they're also going to be wrapped around. So as they go around this job, they will wrap around, and you can see them currently sitting off of the worksheet. And they'll actually wrap around by that revolution value, which is 2.26 within an inch of the end and the start of the worksheet here, if you recall, because that's why we set that value in the form. So we had the spirals begin and end within an inch of the start and end of our material. Now let's have a look at some of our layers. We've popped up to the top here, we've got a layers tab, and you can see that some layers are created automatically when we create a rotary job. So you have a zero plane, we have a bounding box, and then we have this layer here, crucially, which is our vectors. So they're on their own separate layer, and you can turn them on and off, but it also helps with organization. So if you ever want to use the layers to organize your vectors, I highly recommend you doing so, and we do have a video on how to use layers as well. So I highly recommend watching that if you'd like to learn more about layers. But with that covered, let's have a look at actually doing some machining now. So let's hop over to the toolpath menu. So first of all, we're going to go over to the top left here and click this button to go over to the toolpath menu. So with the toolpath menu now open, let's go to check our material setup. So let's click on set. 
Now you can see I've got my diameter three inches, my bottom left XY dating position. My cylinder has a Z0 set to the center of the cylinder. I don't need to worry about model position in the material because I'm not using a model. And in this case, these settings are all safe and sound for my machine. So I highly recommend that you double check these that they're safe and sound for your particular setup. So do make sure to adjust these values accordingly, according to your setup. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now we're ready to have a look at creating a toolpath. So we're gonna make sure our vectors are selected. You can see they're now highlighted in pink and we're gonna come up to our profile toolpath. So now we're in the profile toolpath form. The first thing I'm gonna do is look at my depth. So I don't need a start depth, but I will put my cut depth at 0.2. The tool I'm using here is a ball nose, quarter inch ball nose. And I'm happy with all these settings, but do check these are safe and sound for your particular setup and your particular tool. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna machine on the vectors because I'm gonna be machining along these lines, not left or right of them on the actual line itself. Don't need to add a separate last pass or any tabs. I don't need to worry about ramps, leads, etc. in here. And I can go ahead and rename this to profile spiral and I can hit calculate. Now you'll notice right now it's showing the job as a flat preview, but if we come to this button here, we can turn it into a rotary one. So we can click that to have the job wrap around. You can clearly see now how the spiral is created. And I can pan this using the right mouse click, or I can use the view control up here to move around and look at my rotary job, as well as these handles to turn the job in 30 degree increments. But with that, I'm just gonna click the top and we're gonna have a look at what this actually looks like as a preview. So with our toolpath selected, let's click preview selected toolpath. And you may notice that it's unwrapped it first. So it's actually done a three axis toolpath, but then wrapped it around to create this spiral column, which looks really nice. And you can see it stopped an inch from the uh, end here and it started an inch from the start of our worksheet here. So this looks really good. But now it's time to look at saving off our toolpath for this file so we can actually go cut it. So with that, we'll close out the preview and we're gonna come up to the save toolpath icon over here. Now this is where we need to select the correct post processor for our machine because if you recall, we're doing a wrapped rotary job. So what that means is we need a G code to reflect that. So we need the G code to reflect the axis that we've set, which is cut along X axis, but we'll wrap the Y axis. So we need a post processor that is compatible with doing that. So it can actually uh, map the Y move to A moves and wrap that axis for us. So. If I come to the drop down down here, you can see one with my machine list, I have one called desktop rotary along X. So I set that up in the machine configuration menu and you can check the machine configuration guide and how to do that. And I have my associated post processor here, which is the G code wrap Y to a inch. And that's wrapping the Y axis to the A axis. And so what I can do now is I can check my toolpaths to save and I can go ahead and click save toolpaths. So I'll click save toolpaths and I'll save it to my tutorial files, create a spiral column folder. I'm gonna call it profile spiral, so it's nice and obvious as to what the toolpath is. I can hit save, and that has now saved that toolpath. Likewise, we can also save this file out. So all we have to do is go up to file, and we can click save as. The save window will pop up, and I'm gonna call this one creating a spiral column. And I'm saving it to a folder that's nice and obvious, so in my tutorial files, create a spiral column, hit save and that is our file saved for editing or for future use and that concludes how to create a spiral column we look forward to seeing you in the next video